before, because I think OMG might not be too dissuaded from going towards that. You would imagine the AD carries are always going to be the first locked in here. You want to try and keep those hyper carries going before anything else can really get locked and loaded. You can build around that from there. I wouldn't mind seeing the Lulu locked in here for EDG, because now I imagine OMG could take that themselves. Yeah, I think that's also another option. What I wouldn't mind seeing here for OMG, to be honest with you, on this next rotation, Cassante, I think. Uh with maybe jungle maybe mid it kind of depends on what they prioritize if they don't see this jungle pick come in here i actually think double solo lane could be a viable choice here for omg uh at the very least no they want to match the support at the very uh minute and they will go towards that cassante so i think that's fine that means that edg have the opportunity to match this top side pick yes but then they'll look to remove away i imagine jungle picks from aki and then pick the next best thing available well, Santa gets locked in here. I feel like you got to take your top laner as well. So uh, EDG will be taking a little bit of the taste of their own medicine, forcing uh, OMG, forcing them to take up the Scion potentially for Ala. And look, we know the Scion can have big impact. 369 was monstrous on it yesterday for JDG and their wins as well. And comboed up with the Zeri, it can do a hell of a lot to just kind of peel for her. But never count out a Cassante. You can never really count out what uh, Sanji can do with this pick. And with both bot lanes and top lanes locked in, again, the hyper focus comes back into those, the jungle and the mid. Do we see something crazy coming out now for o OMG as EDG look to try and just kind of confirm where they want to take these last few bands? Yeah, so EDG looking to remove away hard engaged team fight options. I think that makes sense. If I'm EDG, I'm probably... Well, what am I considering the most here is a jungle pick? Mm, I think Viego could maybe be okay here. I think... Lee Sin could be a bit tricky considering you don't know what the mid jungle matchup already is. So maybe you remove away Wukong here and then you go towards the Viego on R4. As for OMG, it seems like they're just removing away Annie just because they know EDG like to lean on it. I wouldn't be surprised if they counter uh, or proactively also remove away the Lissandra just because they still want to lean on that Ari pick in the mid lane for Cream again. Ooh. We'll see what they want to try and maybe, maybe go for in the last few bands here. I like maybe the Vagar, honestly, mightn't be a bad show here for OMG. Yeah. Just again, keep things difficult, Actually. keep things changing for here for OMG. Because especially when you look at the composition they've already built for themselves, I feel like the Vagar would just do so yeah, much to I, nullify I prefer, everything. I actually, I actually prefer that band more. I think actually your call is, is better. I would like to see OMG do that. Uh, let's see if they clip have it. the read. Someone though. clip it. <laughs> let's send let's it see to if me. they have the read. They don't. <laughs> so with okay, so that's two. Like Annie's a great anti assassin. LeBlanc has a good matchup into Akali. Do I smell mm. an Akali plus X here for Aki and Cream? That's what I'm thinking at the moment. What will JJ want to go towards? Lee Sin, Viego, both up. I think both very valuable options. And of course, the Wukong, which technically sits a tier above them in priority. It feels like for EDG a lot of the time. This at least pick would be a little off theme, Ooh. but it gives them some early game agency, which I definitely feel like they were lacking. So let's see what the they'll pair it up with in the jungle department. I think. For the side of OMG, we mentioned just about every jungler under the sun. They have the opportunity to go towards, I imagine, Aki after that game on on Lee Sin. It looked so good. I would like to see him on it again. Lee Sin Akali. I think that's just going to be the rotation here for OMG, to be honest with you. I think the bands are a bit telegraphed for this Akali pick to come in. Could be overreading it. Maybe there's something else he wants to go, but it's cream. It just feels a little bit destined here that he'll do it in the final game. Take things into his own hands. The Lee Sin's there for Aki. And there it is, the hover. I presume this is going to get locked in. Yeah, I mean, look, you're looking across the board here. If you think of PP Gods, you remember his Thresh plays from 2020 back on V5. If you think of Abel this year, it's all been about the Aphelios. Aki, you know, any Lee, any jungler worth their salt needs to be able to play Lee Sid. We have a nickname for Cassante on OMG. It's Cassanji. These are all comforts right across the board here for OMG. We never even talked about it. We never even got to discuss it really at all. The Elise pick makes perfect sense because the Jace is still up and available. The Jace that was banned consistently throughout these first three games was left open now in game number four. If you can win this now as OMG while facing the Jace, the game five draft is just going out the window. Yeah, game five is going to be insane if we get there. But for now, that's the final lock-in for EDG. Mid 2v2, quite strong. A lot of abilities. There's two champions of shape-shifting uh, ultimate keys. So a lot of strong skirmishing pre-6. I think post-level 6, that's where things can run uh, into a little bit of an issue, right? You don't really gain a massive ability, but perfect execution. Dragon's Rage, two ultimates, which thrive at just blowing up one target specifically. But also, of course, do have the AoE loaded into the kit if it does connect. So... Thing for omg looking towards level six early lane 
maybe the bottom side they can find a little bit of proactive playmaking through the thresh but i think oh, i i will maintain my point jdg got away with a bloody heist yesterday and not that jdg aren't good that they're, they're excellent but plg i think should have been walking over the victors last night so it's not only do you go down to that lower bracket you go down to arguably the scariest looking team of the remaining four as we are here on the rift for game number four series point for edg omg need two in a row to make it to that semi-final Anji finally, finally getting a feel. It's like, wow, is this what it's like to have true power in a lane to freely feel like he's able to kind of go for it? And the funny thing is, like, shanji has been incredibly limited in what champions he's been able to play. We've actually seen uh, four different champions, I believe, now from Ala in this game, whereas we've only actually seen two from Shanji. It's the Cassante from game one, now in game four, and then the Scion for two games. So definitely seeing the, the pressure being put on OMG in that regard. We'll see what he's able to do now that he's been given a little bit of priority, a little bit of agency to get things going for him and his team. So OMG, they need a win. Simple as. If EDG win, they go through to the upper bracket, get themselves a opportunity to one more best of five before they can lock in themselves a MSI spot. Of course, for OMG, if they can take this to a game five, all bets are off the table. Exactly. Bookies wouldn't be too happy. This goes to game five. Shanji just getting a really nice level one trade. Oh, wow. Really, really nice. Could even just queue back to get another World Grasp. Yep. Feels good. I mean, you can't really trade. He's zoning him out of XP, yeah. Yeah, I think he got all the XP, but like, the trade itself still feels really good. Shanji still got a pot. I'm actually really curious about whether or not JJ. Nah, I mean, I feel like JJ has to just path pot straight away. Because there's no flash on Shanji. If he continues to trade aggressively like this, he can be punished, but does he really want to make that adaptation to play away from the bottom side? I really do doubt it. movements already from Shanji in the early game. Sure that he's uh, making the most of uh, all the time he has on this Kasante pick into a much more favorable matchup. So we look to see where these junglers go. And this is the thing now as well we're going to keep an eye on because the Elise is exceptional when you tie it up with something like, of course, the, um, the Jace and, and even like, you know, early game with the bot lane with the Lulu. It can have an extreme impact on getting those dives off if you want, if you can find the right opportunities. But more often than not with the Elise, and it's why we kind of questioned it coming into this, was that you tend to see a little, you know, kind of hesitancy. Teams just play a lot more defensively. They're happy to let themselves go down 15, 20 CS. And then the Elise wow. kind of loses its value later on in the game. Definitely does. Oh, Flash gets used. All in now underneath the tower. Can he survive? That's the question. Oh, oh he trades this. That's a really unfortunate oh, moment no. there for Aki, but one for one. The wave will mostly get taken up here by Ala. That's a massive blunder. It's the problem with diving Scion as well. The execution does fall a little bit short, but Ala doesn't really miss anything. He clears a majority of the wave in the zombie form, then teleports. Anyway, dive is happening on the bottom side. Abel's He's already dead. gone. He's dead. You see the flash being used already. There's a good hook okay. though. JJ not going to be able to get any turret aggro. No one was tanking because you have the repel and that's the power of the Elise in the early game. Exactly. JJ finds his pounce on the bottom side and it draws out this teleport from Shanji. So even though Shanji is going to pick up some of this wave tied up with PP God, Arla, at four minutes, I'm not sure he'll get a plate after the Molish proc. And certainly a bit of an indent and will slowly continue to chip away. And the tower is. Let's let's take a look. Let's see how this dive doesn't quite connect. So the Q flash away. W and it just takes a really long time for Aki to end up finding the Sonic yeah. Wave. And it means that. Let's see. I think he woes him in the mix of all of that to get the tower dive started. He just ends up dying. Then down here, forced away. Able was eventually, even though the play is pretty good from PP God to keep that Elise off of his AD carry. No! <laughs> Not again! The two, I don't, uh, you know what? I'm going to say a bold yeah. statement. I don't think Shanji's Go gotten a cannon minion all day. <laughs> 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 hey, you know what? I, mean, I, don't want any, I don't want anyone to fact check okay. me on that. I just okay. want to believe it. I'll say, he's probably not gotten a cannon on screen so far today. Ah. Well... Leave. has a flash of cleanse and has to use both of them, but he's waited too long. Oh. Or has he? The Lulu, the machine gun, using the picks to get it all going for them. And PP God thought he had something to go. And not quite able to do it. That was key, actually, dodging out that glitter lance. I think if he gets hit by that, he dies. 
Neve leveled up in the middle of that fight, man. Oh, that's so unlucky. That 2v2 should have gone the way of OMG. But just timing. Timing on it makes it so good. Let's take a look. Did, did Mako ooh a minion even? I wonder if this is intentional. If the call was, hey, I'm about to hit this level four. It's a really, really good turnaround engage. Minion dies? No, it's just the natural minions. Some oh, that's so unfortunate. Yeah. Because they're fighting in the wave as well, so you would think the minions would be aggroed on the champions here. It's not a riot moment, I promise, but it does feel really bad. It does feel really, really bad. And now that 2v2 falls further behind for Abel. And off the back of that 2v2, that dragon looks like it's going to be taken up pretty easily, pretty happily. They get themselves the first objective of the game. Is it EDG? So you can see fair chunks coming out here as Ala gets all in by the all out, but doesn't lose his own oh, ultimate there. Curious to see how that one would work. And now Abel moving in, getting caught out straight away oh. by Aki. That's just really smart baiting, but can they finish off the kill? That's the real question. They've got a flash in. They're going to go for the hook. No Morano for the thresh. He be gone. Committed everything. But can Aki get away again? Mako with the machine gun Lulu. Trying so hard. The Akali goes in. It's a double kill for the Jace. And now, can they get the execute? Oh. No! Oh. It's falling apart. He has to commit. He knows he's dead. It ends up being a two for two in the end of it all. But my god, what is happening in his bot lane? Oh, it's just a fist fight. It's Armageddon down here. And it's going the way of EDG for the most part. I guess this one's a two for two trade, but it's just a nightmare scenario that you have to commit the way you do for individual members like Cream, like PP God having to go forward to actually pick up the kill on leave. And EDG happily just clean it up. Nice and easy. They're just rubbing their hands together because they got the objective before that even kicked off, so yep. they really don't care about this. Leave is just looking for the 1v1, not expecting Leeson in the bush perhaps. There's a ward in the lane, so maybe he is, but gets caught out. They just don't have the damage though to actually make this one happen as soon as Lulu shows up for the shields. That's it, they have to back away. Flash forward play, first quarter doesn't connect, so then people got to have to continue to stay in the position. You probably would have died anyway, but it's just one of those things which it just has to feel slightly tilting, right? At the end of the day. First Q, I'm not sure if it connected. The second one does. Q forward dodged, actually, by Mako, to be honest. That's less of a miss and more of a sidestep from Mako. It just means that Kree has to overextend for everything. It just feels really bad. Oh, really yeah, well played by EDG. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm a big OMG fan. Enjoy how they play League of Legends, but it's starting to feel a little desperate. It's not feeling good right now. Aki, level six. Does have access to the Dragon's Rage kick, should he need it? Sante moving down as well. Shanti is there, but Mako's already made the first rotation. Cream not really in a position to kind of go for this right now. Misses the Shuren could flip, so can't really follow Ooh, it up. Pp God is here. We have 5v5, you would imagine, if EDG want to go for the lightning crash comes out, they miss the Q as the Herald does get secured, I believe, as they look for the fight now Here afterwards. Cream finds them! Mako dead as well! Where have they all gone? JJ does get blocked out, not quite going to go down, but three kills, or two kills, and everyone else's health are so... And Shanji gets the solo oh. kill! Shanji got the solo kill, the Herald! He wore tops together, oh. it was about to break, that was... Oh. Seconds away. Fractures of a second away. Shanji got the solo kill as well, like we were saying. Everything goes OMG's way this time. And this is what I was talking about in the draft phase. Lee Sin, Akali, Thrive. Level six is in. Skirmishing is just their sided. Plain and simple. Fofo, JJ, their champions, unless they're first pounce, unless they're blowing up a target immediately, their champions just, I don't want to say they're useless, but they just don't, they don't provide what Lee Sin and Akali can in skirmish like this. Coordinated go in. Execute lead. Yeah. The energy champions, Lee Sin, Carly, synced up perfectly. Nice body block to ensure there's no execute there on JJ as well. And Shanji blocks the ultimate. Where does he bring him with the all out? Does he just make him and just, just follows him down? Really, really simple. Yeah. Nothing you can do there. No flash available, no ults to get out, and you're just getting run down. That's just as easy as it is. Even oh, with no, the kiting yeah. of the turret, so close, so, so close. But now we're back into it. Okay, six to six, it's only a dragon difference. You still have that Rift Herald in back pocket. OMG, we're looking a bit desperate, but like you said, they recognize the power they had available to them. Yeah, exactly. And I think as well, just the fact they were in that choke 
just makes things so much easier, you know, the kind of funneled in. It's a lot more difficult from the perspective of EDG to avoid getting kind of minced like that. As an attempt was made there with the death sentence to try and predict where Mako would be. Doesn't find anything. Shanti's gonna do his best to pick up this plate. Gonna find it on this wave. Didn't wanna risk rocking the demolish. X flash forward. No hook. Would have been cleansed likely by Lee, but the attempt is still there. They want this Herald. They want to get Abel back into this game. He's definitely been struggling a little bit in the early phases. I don't think he's going to get this play. I think it's all going to go. No, 350 yeah. on the Lee Sin. But all gonna in go fairness, to you know, we saw this in game number one. Aki on the Lee Sin was able to do a hell of a lot when he was able to get an early lead. So Samurai not picking up all the kills. That's five assists to his name, though, as he looks to try and kind of bring this game back. But... OMG, not quite done with this series just yet. Dragon in 20 seconds. They do not have a TP on their top laner. He may look for a bit of an engage. I will say Fofo having a decent time now in this mid lane. 20 CS or so up. Already starting to show the value of this Jace. I will say we saw it in the highlight of the last one. The Accelerate Shock Blast missed everybody, despite it being basically, you know, fish in a barrel. And unfortunately, when you miss that first kind of key uh, damage spell when you're looking for a fight like that, it gives time for OMG just to kind of react and get them, you know, so much more opportunity to, to turn back to them. Yeah, it does. Again, you know, with champions like that, you need to be first pounce, right? You need, absolutely, to remove a target from a team fight. Otherwise, you're getting out skirmished by Lee Sin plus Akali. It, it's just going to happen until you've got items on board for the Jace, where maybe if you don't get one shot in the assassination attempt, you can certainly be one shot back with all of that lethality and all the AD that the Mabiru mana will eventually give. I think one important point to note, honestly, all this oh. all out across the wall. I mean, it's a long run it is an all out, and the ghost damage. as well. We are going to see Zion use his ultimate to try and gain away, but will he get knocked back? Yes, he will. Not enough damage just yet, but he is tripping him down very nicely. Oh, Aki is here, and Aki executes him. Really well done there by the OMG top and jungle. Shanji might not have had enough damage by himself, but he did have a spare champion in his back pocket. Aki just comes up, executes now. This is an opportunity for EDG to just come down here, respond, try and put some pressure down. Abel's actually taking away the red bar, just trying to get some cross map camps, and also a bit of golden resources because he knows he's going to be losing it via the wave. So EDG trade it out again in resource, but still kind of answered out in kind. Now Cream, lucky they're both here. They're looking for the response. Cream, going to find the opportunity to pounce forward. Now fizzle out. This, yeah, momentum of the, the momentum of this game feels a very different. Shanji's feeling proactive. He's not just accepting his fate, you know, soaking things up. And he's getting effectively solo kills. Aki's taking blue right now. And then he realizes, oh, hang on. You're going to take him over the wall. I can join you for this and then get something. But we're going to look at the replay. Or not the replay. We're going to look at the mid lane. Nothing going to land on the cream. He's got some fancy feet. He's not going to die either. So not going to be getting the, the patented LPL replay into a uh, kill during live. And uh, yeah, I mean, Ala just gets caught and, and there's nothing he can do without the flash. Exactly. Super easy rundown once the Lee Sin has access to it. And it's just well played by Shandy to even find the angle in the first place because it was full HP. Typically, you're not going to all out Sion to try and get the rundown because you're just likely not going to have enough damage. In the isolation 1v1, and it works this time around. And OMG finally putting Shanji onto not a full tank works out now. Look at this play. Oh, they get the kick down, but can they kill him off? Yes, they can. Yes, they can. The cleanse and the flash, just not enough to keep him alive. And Aki feels very good on this Lee Sin pick. Yes, he does. And again, he's just shutting down Lee. Same thing from game one. Lee Sin, Aki, Zeri, Lee. Just gets Insect backwards and he even blows that flash on the very back end, thinking he can maybe escape, thinking he can maybe get some kind of reprieve, but he doesn't. And now he just doesn't have that summer spell for the next five minutes. Which is absolutely crucial to how OMG can attempt to make picks. We get a replay. Just clean execution. On vision. Not on vision for Aki though. Slips in right here. And then there's a wall in that middle brush, so they they know. They've got perfect information. Ward hop. After the flash. Into the kick. Into the calorie ball. And even though the damage from the turn is great. The flash. It walks into the box. Right into the box. Wow. I think there's uh, damage until someone hits it first, so yeah, unfortunate. Yeah. That's tough. I, uh, I I actually believe the idea was to try and skate over the wall, but he just clips the box. Quite unlucky for Leaf, to be fair. 
but yeah, excuse you're still clean by OG. <laughs> oh, Cream doesn't have his shroud. Might be in a little bit of trouble here. Ooh, wow. nice flash. Cream just looks like a different human being on this pick. Yes, look, do not get me wrong. He's still falling behind Fofo in this matchup, but the Akali is just so difficult to kill off. Yeah. Hits the flash off the back of the arc. Just one of those things where sometimes you'll think you, you're kind of locked into the animation for a lot longer than you are. That looked really, really clean. Carol picked up on the opposite side whilst that cross map's going on. This is a tier two though on the side lane, so that's 300 gold between Leave and GAJ. I think there's a little bit more actually. And the tier one as well. But uh, and the tier one, yeah, you're right actually. But it will be traded out for mid lane towers, so it's gold value for map pressure. Will we see OMG also get this tier two? I think it'll be a bit of a stretch, by the way, because it's possible. Not quite able to get it. It's low yep. enough that the next time someone leaves an idle, they should be able to get it. And top lane is happy with uh, Ala just trying to, you know, soak up as much as he can. I believe uh, Shanji's almost a full level ahead of him at this stage. Now, even if he hits level 12 here, he's still... Like, like, like Shanji's only about two or three minions away from 13. Yeah, Shanji has two kills. He's perfect CSing. He's two items already, by the way, which is pretty early. 16 minutes in the game. Items aren't particularly cheap, or at the very least the Mythic isn't cheap. Sunfire is on the cheaper side. So he's really, really strong at this stage in the game. Didn't go for the, fro uh, the Frozen Fist for the sticking power. Just the Jack Show for that all-out tankiness. So we'll see what he can get done. Oh, Ooh, face check. Shanji and Aki. Do face check, but there's no real CC apart from the Cocoon. So once that leaves, no one really going to be able to kind of follow up on top of that. Top lane is in an equal state, but Reem finds himself in the bot lane, so he should be able to push this one up very nicely for yep. himself. Dragon is only a chem soul, though, so not exactly the most ideal one for EDG to be throwing away a game either. Yeah, definitely not. I think it's really important to know, though, that because EDG do have those two dragons, they are two dragons close to soul. Those are still fairly important stats. Peach Gold's forced to flash. And I think the fact that EDG are first here in the river is so important, right? Throwing out cocoons, poke from Jace. It just puts them in a much better position than walking in. They are still losing the tower on the bottom side. Abel will get that in isolation, so that's gold to himself. Here we have landed over, so it's not a long walk. And it's a fight on two fronts, which honestly, OMP prefer a little bit more. And yet, if you have to make a decision to go in. You gotta go for it. The Moonlight Vigil is decent. Oh. That kick is even better. But can they kill off Eve? They cannot. Aki's gone down. The dragon's still alive. Cream looking for the execution on the back end of this. Ala very, very low, but he's the tank. He soaked up his damage. He's done his work. We're gonna see the cleanse come in as Lee tries to scout this one out. And Shanji takes him out. His third kill. Bofo looking for a little bit more, but he can't get the damage down. Kasanji strikes again. And that's everything you want here oh. for OMG. They'll even pick up Mako on the back end of this, but they've got the Akali is still a 2v2. They're going to try to get the knockback here onto Ala, who's been soaking up a little bit too much damage and now has nowhere to go. Has got a flash, but isn't going to commit back into it. We're going to have respawns coming in. This fight is still going, Jamada. It's still going, but this is why we needed Kasante in the hands of Sanji because he just looks so much threatening in these team fights compared to when he's been put on the side throughout this series. And OMG feel no longer defanged in these team fights with the diving duo trio, really. Of Aki Cream and Shanji. Leave cannot get away from that much dive. EDG are gonna recall, teleport back to this dragon. And they will reclaim this position. The but... available. <sighs> yep, I mean... come back in from both sides. Still plenty of exactly. vision control though for EDG. And we're gonna go again, Jamana. One more time. We'll bring us back around the very go round. Do they look for the fight? I don't think they do. Yeah, they're just a little bit too little too late. Or do they look for the fight after the fact? That's the question. They Dragon's secured. Do they want to try and look for this one here? The cocoon was decent. The perfect execution. Not quite anything else there. Okay. And EDG make a perfect exit. Yeah, good. Good good heist. Good heist for EDG. Get out. Don't lose anything. Cream's ultimate was already back off cooldown. Shanji still had a while to go, and so did I think just about everyone else. So EDG just kind of leveraging the fact that, yeah, Ultimate economy lies in their favor. Don't forget, EDG technically really only working with three ultimates in this game. Yep. <coughs> in this game. Beg your pardon. As I think EDG make the right call to try and you know turn around on the target. But this kick here, four member knockup. Ooh. So strong. And imagine if Cream was just slightly closer to this call when that knockup comes through. It's just decimation. It's still decimation anyway in the extended because you can see Shanji just gets in range, walks up with Ghost, I think. Takes him out. With the all out. Knock back on the few three because that's a commit from Popo. Doesn't dive because of the shielding. Really solid. Root comes down. Flash away. Still connects. And he just calls back that Graviton for the final kill. Excellent stuff.
It ends up being a three for three at the end of it all because BB got died so early. Felt like OMG were bringing back that fight, but EDG still get themselves on the soul point. They still keep themselves only 2,000 gold behind, but that's a 4 0 1 Shanji right now. He is just monstrous coming into these fights. And it feels like leave. I feel for him on the Zeri because what's, what's he supposed to do with the cleanse, the flash, the dashes? Even if he does get away, he's not part of the fight. Exactly. He's always basically just playing survival mode against all of these diving bruisers, assassins, whatever it may be. As now OMG rampage through the mid lane, they get the tier two. That's going to feel good for map movement. I think that's connect. The lantern's the lantern. there, so it's fine. And this is the problem I, I fear for EDG now, is because of this Elise pick, how much teamfight prowess they really have. I think dealing with so much dive, and like, Elise likes to thrive in, in you know, pick esque composition setups where you can easily deny away fog of war, pieces of information, fog, and then you make the pounce, you make the first move. It's so difficult to do it against this composition, it feels like from OMG, especially now that they're ahead. And even if, you know, you do finally set up a, a, a patch of fog. Realistically, it's either PP God or Shanji that's fate checking. If it's Shanji, you're probably not going to kill him in the duration. If it's PP God, you might kill him, but then your backline is likely going to just get eviscerated by yep. uh, the top side trio. So I feel like EDG are in a bit of a catch 20. Sorry, Jamada, before two. it goes away. Yeah. That's a 3,000 gold lead in top lane. Yeah, that's all right. That's all yeah. Right. <laughs> I just, I'm sorry to cut across you. No, no, no. I really okay. needed to make note of that. <laughs> yeah, no. 3,000 gold! Yeah, pretty chill. No, no, you know, not a big, big deal. Shanji is only on his way to a full melt burst, which is just going to make him even more frustrating to deal with in terms of killing off Leave. And honestly, I quite like the ionization just because Leave has gone full blown life skill this game. But away from that, Baron's being slid up. He'll be spotted out. Got but what can EDG really do? They've got the good guns on Able, like you mentioned. Oh, that could TP in. That could be the question here. There it is. They get the TP. That's all that Back OMG away. wanted. They backed yep. themselves away. They've got the increased healing from the plants. Now Shanji, no flash on him, so it needs to be a little bit more creative. We are going to see Aki almost get caught out there, but I think they look at the amount of shock rooms that were stacked up there by Able. They're going to back themselves away. As I say, that flashes have to be burnt there as all it was. Tokyo drifting his way back into the Dragon Pin in what looked like a decent play from OMG where they could just got the teleport and backed out. It's got a bit scrappy. Yeah, they just overstay in the river a little bit. And then there's the angle available for Arla to just come in, force the flashes, and that's huge. Able, no flash for the next Dragon Fight in a minute's time. Maybe they can pick him off. You can start to see the potency of the poke from Jace as well come online now that the two items are there. They just have to find it and they have to find it consistently. I think a couple of resets likely due here for OMG. Finish off a couple of items. Cream's almost at Shadow Flame. Able maybe bases for Crit Cloak, maybe a pot, kind of depends. Pickaxe, there you go. Pickaxe Crit Cloak. Got a couple more stats. Realistically, we just need Cream at two items if you're looking at this from the perspective of OMG. But EDG, I think they're there, realistically, for now. This is still a fight, which you don't really want to give up. You try and get the soul just for the sake of the stats it does give. They are here first in the river, and again, that's the setup. The preferable setup that they need. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Abel. Yeah, oh, I don't know why you're I'm... fighting for that one whatsoever. What? Fofo rightfully brings down the hammer. And that was just a really stupid call there from the OMG bot lane. I, I agree. I'm not even going to mince words either. That was just plain silly. Plain silly for a red buff. Now, you will get the soul. Uncontested. You can't really cross map. You can't get Baron. I mean, That's there's no need. I'm, I'm, I'm annoyed at this because there's why? Look, you, the, the first initial thing comes in, the cocoon, cocoon comes out, fine. Back away. Give up the red buff. You don't need to fight this. It's just the moment of red. Here for OMG. And I wonder how much that's going to cost them. Now that the soul has been picked up for EDG. I do feel... <laughs> I mean, I don't know, it's such a weird soul, Chemtech soul. Just because of the way that it actually does things, so... It's not as if it's a... Uh, great for It's Arla. not a combat. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's great for, it's great for Arla, right? But <laughs> how much will it achieve for the rest of the team on a consistent basis? The shielding and healing power is going to be great, specifically for Leave. That can't be understated, but aside from that, the actual soul itself, not particularly the strongest. But OMG's still in the game, not out of it yet. 
And it's all about this Baron now, because the Dragon's not going to spawn for another five minutes. And EDG again, taking control of this area, ensuring that OMG have to face check. And the face check has to come in, and if you can hit a couple of those, uh, a couple of those shock blasts, or accelerated or not, you will be doing significant damage. There is going to be a cocoon. Funny enough, it would have missed, but Shandy decided to go into it. So uh, there is that. And of course, with the soul off the table, you can give it over to EDG. We are going to see them kind of just take their full focus onto this Baron. They now have started it. They'll take the time pretty damn quickly. Elise, Zeri, and Jace, they'll destroy this right now. The Akali is nowhere to be found. Cream is not going to be a part of this straight away. They're oh, turning away from this one. Shanti trying to run away, but they have no vision control. EDG are suffocating OMG out of this. Aki needs to find himself a way into this pit if he can. They do get some decent vision down. Fofo has been caught now. The lightning crash, and Fofo is dead. PP God going to be next for the follow. Lee is the next big carry that you need to be able to kill off. Oh, Mako goes down as Abel just finds himself 1v3 trying to get the shot from over it. But have they done enough? It's a 3 for 2 in favor of EDG, but I don't think the Baron can be taken anymore. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, they definitely still do have the damage, but they're just worried about where Cream and Aki can be waiting on this top side. They're they are going to finally kick it off. They're going to get information because the Pinkle comes over the wall. Cream! Oh, Cream. He's getting chased down there by Leave. You're going to have to leave right now because you don't really have the momentum oh. or the mo Trying to see if they can run away from this one. One more cue from JJ, but Leave takes it away from him with his own. They have given time for these respawns to come in. Mako, PP God, and Shanji all making their way back out onto the map, and we are not quite done yet. Yep, OMG Hopers. That's an okay enough trade. That's a teleport. He doesn't know. They have no vision. They don't know it's not being taken. Now they do. He had to commit that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't blame him. I don't blame him. You're right, actually. It's a lot of wards. It is a lot of wards. How many? How, how, that was two pinks and a reg. <laughs> Let's get a look at this though. I mean, like I was mentioning earlier, EDG they thrive when they can deny information and vision. And right here, Shanji has to face check in because he's the tankiest member. If I just get chain CC down, he never gets a moment to move. From full health to no health. And it did take them quite a while. As good hook onto Popo means that he gets back down. Alive. Come out of the gone. come out. It's gone. Oh, just nothing going the right way for OMG as they realize the Baron has been taken way too late. Now we're going to see a full engage coming in here. Abel a little bit separated here as Allah. And like the most out of this Chemtech soul, finally feeling a little bit more emboldened to move forward. And EDG are just kind of coming out trumps at all stages of this game. It looked like OMG maybe have been able to try and get something back. But right now, Shanji on this Cassante is not doing what he needs to be doing. They have got it, Allah. They're only going to do a little bit of damage, nothing else more. Again, if he's tanking up everything, that's fine for EDG. It really is. It's just so tanky. Shield as well coming out from Lulu just to make it that more frustrating. Don't forget, Arl is one of the few champions on this team that can really utilize the healing and shielding power, or rather, the actual soul itself, because he just dies so slowly. Damage reduction is pretty valuable as EDG approach Harkies on the flank. It has to be he needs, he needs to kick Lee. He needs to kick Lee, but no flash, no cleanse. He needs to find a good target, but he can't. They're going to try and jump back in on top of Lee has been caught out and taken out. Aki goes golden, gives himself a little bit of extra time, but he shall go no further than that. Back to the great screen with you. The Lulu has gone down, and all is forced to flash away as well. He will be killed off by Shanji, who takes a dark passage. That leads him to some light. Not quite the best situation here for OMG, but they get themselves a one fight. It's breathing room to a point. And I think, very importantly, Abel didn't have to use his flash in this fight. It's that Elder Dragon spawns in a minute's time machine, and I think that's that's going to be... That's going to be the make or break. Not just for this game, but for the series as a whole. Because EDG, they do kind of overstay their welcome here on this takedown. Focused a lot on Aki, but look at the front line leave. Pull out a bit by Shanji. Brings him to the side. And I think also manages to get the lock back in. So it's just a pretty big chain CC where eventually Cream finds his way on top of him. Aki in the back line is buying a lot of time, keeping JJ and Fofo back there. So they're not adding damage to the front line. And that's crucial because Mako gets separated off and able, is able to pounce because of the positioning there from the remainder of EDG. We're back into live. 14 seconds until Elder Drake spawns. I want to get a quick little bit of a history lesson here. 2014, OMG's last finals, they were beaten by EDG. 2017, EDG beats them in the third place matchup. 
And in 2023, EDG finally blocked them again. Thank you to the ever-present Munchables for that little history lesson there, but we are going to come back in. It's going to be a little bit of an Elder Flip. This could be it. 16 to 16. Gold basically cool. even. Damage already coming out. So much on the PP God. Can they get anything else off for EDG? Not willing to kind of fully commit to this one just yet. They don't have Flash on leave just yet, and they don't want to just try and run into oh. him. The PP God enabled taking so much. You no. cannot stop a Zion! And leave gets up the kills! Now you're a no lady carry and no support! There's nowhere for you to run! There's nowhere for you to go! And you just cannot take this fight! EDG will be taking this series 3-1! to one. They will indeed. Arla with the massive, massive Scion ult locks Abel in place. Abel had flash. He could have gone out of the way of it, but he just elects to not press the button. And with that, the series will come to its conclusion. EDG will put a stop temporarily to the Cinderella story that has been the last couple of series for OMG. They'll drop them down into that lower bracket against BLG. And EDG set themselves up with a date against E. JGDG in that semi final bracket. A lot of G's in the LPL. A lot of G's. But uh, no bigger G's than EDG right now. They're feeling good. Look, game one didn't go as planned. A lot of people kind of coming in expecting, expecting great things from EDG. Didn't see it in game number one. Game number two, they felt up, you know, a little bit better, learned up uh, a little bit more from their first game and said, right, let's figure out how we can go about this. And then in game three and four, they just felt in control. It felt like OMG were the ones to try and throw those desperation Hail Marys. Even the fact that despite Kasante got so far ahead, Shanti got to four kills. And even then, it still felt with Fofo having this chase for the first time in this series, there was a reason why it was banned so consistently. Yeah, there was.